Now that we've finished our discussion of important fluid properties, we're going to spend the rest of the semester looking at and analyzing fluids as they move around in their environment. To start that discussion, we're going to talk about fluid statics. That means that the fluids are at rest or not in motion. If the fluids are not in motion, that means that the velocity v is equal to zero. Okay, and if the velocity is equal to zero, by definition, the spatial gradient in velocity dv dy is equal to zero. And then if you recall from our lecture on viscosity, we made the definition that tau, the shear stress, is equal to mu dv over dy. We've already said dv dy is equal to zero, therefore tau is equal to zero, so the shear stresses are zero. What that means is that in fluid statics, the only forces are normal forces, which in fluids are pressure forces. Before we get into a detailed analysis of pressure forces and the statics, we need to def make a couple definitions. The first of those is going to be de to define pressure itself, okay? And we define pressure as a continuously distributed force intensity. What that means is it's force per unit area, okay? To demonstrate that, if we look at SI units, the, the unit is Pascal, PA, and it has the form of newtons, the SI unit for force, over meters squared, the SI units for length squared, so area. Similarly, we can look at English units, and in English units we have PSI, PSI, you've probably seen this before, and that is pounds, the English unit for force, over inches squared, the length squared or area. So those are the units. The next thing we need to think about is what we're measuring the pressure relative to. What is the datum that we're going to use? And there's two ways that it's commonly done. The first is absolute pressure, which is the pressure relative to absolute zero pressure. It's analogous to absolute temperature. We often use it in ideal gas law. We use absolute pressure to define the state point of a gas or a liquid. And in English units especially, you'll see the term PSIA, where the A here is telling you that was, that's absolute pressure. It's pressure measured relative to absolute zero pressure, okay? The other and more commonly used and intuitive way we can, datum we use is atmospheric pressure. So we have gauge pressure. And that's the pressure me measured relative to atmospheric pressure. And again, you can automatically see how that's more intuitive to us because we experience atmospheric pressure every day. And so if we set the, the pressure around us here to zero and then measure the pressure relative to that, okay? And in English units, just like in the one above, you'll see PSIG with the G standing for gauge. In SI units that distinguish that distinction is not made quite as often um, for some various reasons that we will may or may not get to later, but especially in English units, if you see the A or the G after the PSI, that'll tell you what that datum is, okay? The next thing we wanna do is let's do our first analysis of fluid statics using pressure. To do that, we're gonna use figure 2.7 in your book, and we're gonna look at an incline wedge submerged in a fluid, okay? I've drawn it out here. We have a wedge here with an angle alpha relative to the horizontal. It has points A, B, C, D on this plane. We've defined the X direction as coming kind of into and out of the board. The Y direction is here along the board. And then the Z direction is vertical. We can make a couple of definitions of lengths of our wedge. So we have between C and D, we have delta Y. We have the vertical is delta Z into and out of the board delta x, and then the um, length along the actual incline, what we we're defining as delta l. So there's our setup, and then we put this body into some water, and we're gonna do a fluid statics analysis of this object, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is, basically what you've done in statics is a, a type of free body diagram. So we're gonna write out all of our forces acting on this so first, let's start with the x direction. So we have here, px. And then because pressure is a force intensity, to get the force, we need to multiply that by an area. And in this case, is delta y delta z. Okay. 
Okay. We have another pressure that's acting in the Z direction on the bottom of this plate, this wedge, sorry, and that's PZ. And again, we need to multiply that by an area, and in this case it's delta X delta Y to get a force. And then we also have one acting normal here to the incline. And we'll call that one PN. And it's going to need to multiply that by delta L delta Y. Okay? And then there's one more force that we can't neglect, and that's the weight. So we have W acting down, and we'll write out the expression for that when we get to that point. Okay? So there's our four bits of information about the forces acting on this body that's sitting at some depth immersed in the fluid. Okay? So just like in statics, we're going to start with the sum of the forces. The x direction equals zero. Okay? So the first one we can write out, well, if we go back to our diagram, the two we have here for the x direction are px, and then there's going to be a component in the x direction of the normal force on the incline, which is going to be pn delta l delta y sine alpha from trigonometry. So we write that out. So we have pn delta l, I'm sorry, delta y delta l sine alpha minus px delta y delta z equals zero. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is make a trigonometric substitution and say that delta z is equal to delta L sine of alpha. Okay? So let's plug that into our equation. We have PN delta Y delta L sine of alpha minus PX delta Y delta L sine alpha equals zero. Okay? Now we can start crossing some things out, okay? So we have delta y in both of them, and we have delta l in both of them, and we have sine alpha in both, okay? So ultimately what we end up with is pn is equal to px, right? So pn is equal to px. Now let's look at the sum of the forces in the z direction. So again, sum of the forces the z direction equals zero. Okay? All right, so let's think back to our diagram here. In the z direction, we have PZ, right? We have the weight of the fluid, displaced weight of the fluid, or the weight of the object. And then we also have a component in the z direction of this normal force. So that there's three things we need to take account for. All right, so let's write those out. So for the z direction, we have PZ delta X delta Y minus PN delta Y delta L cosine of alpha minus gamma, the weight of the fluid, times one half delta Z delta X delta Y is all equal to zero. Okay, so that last term here is W, and that is simply the specific weight of the fluid times the volume, or one half delta X, delta Y, delta Z, the one half because it's an incline and not a rectangle. Okay, so let's again, let's make another definition like we did before, and we're going to say that delta X is equal to delta L cosine of alpha. Okay, so now we're just going to replace x with L cosine alpha, which we get from the trigonometry. And write it out again, we have P, excuse me, PZ times delta Y delta L cosine of alpha minus PN delta Y delta L cosine of alpha 
minus one half gamma delta z delta y delta l cosine of alpha. Okay? Start crossing things out. We have a delta y, a delta y, and a delta y. We have a delta L, a delta L, a delta L. And we have a cosine alpha, cosine alpha, cosine alpha. And we can rewrite it again. PZ minus PN minus one half gamma delta Z equals zero. Okay, the next thing we can do is take the limit as z goes to zero. So now we're going to take the limit as this goes to zero. What happens there is that whole term, this whole term here, is delta z goes to zero, that goes to zero, and we end up with pz equal to pn. Okay? Ultimately, what is, that means is for pressure direction does not matter. And if we write that, we get P is equal to PX is equal to P y is equal to p z okay so pressure acts in all directions equally okay that concludes this lecture on the definition of pressure and in the next video we will talk about the pressure variation in a fluid in fluid in a fluid arrest okay see you next time